top hat functions. We're told that the two functions have widths 2a and 2b, where b is greater than a. So in the answer, I've sketched the two top hat functions. Now we have to remember to find the convolution. What we have to do is offset one of the functions. It doesn't matter which. In this case, I'll do it with the blue function. And we offset it by a, an amount equal to x. Now because of the way the functions are determined, they're both symmetrical about x equals 0. The offset in this case is just the center to center distance. So we call that value x. And then we introduce a dummy variable, which we then use to integrate over the product of the two functions. And the value that we get for that integral is the value of the convolution at the specific value x. And then what we do, we have to imagine that x changes, and for each value of x, we work out the overlap again. Now, because of the form of the two functions, the overlap turns out to be fairly straightforward. If we move to this position here, then it turns out that the overlap is simply just the common area. So it's this region which I've shaded in green there, just the region where the two functions are non-zero. So I just delete that and then we'll move the, move the um, function back again. Now, hopefully what we can see is that Let's delete that. That the functions, when x is very negative or very positive, there's no overlap between the functions. So the convolution at that point is zero. It's only, if we now start to think about um, the function, it's only when we get to this point here that the functions start to overlap. So at this point, again, we'll sketch on the The distance between the centers of the function, it's from there to about there, and that's the value of x. And what we can see in this case is that x is equal to, it's just the sum of the two half widths. It's a plus b, but because x is negative, it's minus a plus b. So as we come in from minus infinity, we don't start to get any contribution to the convolution until x is equal to minus a plus b. And then if we continue to increase x, we can see that now the overlap starts to increase. And it will increase in a linear fashion as we move the blue function further and further to the right. Remember, the convolution value for the given value of x is just the amount of overlap in this case. And what we can see is that the overlap reaches a maximum at this point here. And... To get to this point, we've had to shift the blue function by an additional distance of the width of the blue function, so 2a to the right. So at this point, x is equal to, it's the previous value, but plus 2a in this case. So that gives me minus b minus a plus 2a, so it gives me minus b plus a. So between these two values, the convolution value will increase in a linear fashion. As we go further, we can see that now the amount of overlap remains constant. Now that the blue function is entirely inside the red function, the overlap remains constant, so the convolution has a constant value. And it's not until we get to this point here where the overlap starts to decrease again. And we can hopefully see that at this point here, x has a value, x is equal to, in this case, it's plus b, but then minus a. Okay, And then we can continue to slide the blue function over the red function. Now we're in the regime where the overlap between the two functions is decreasing, and it falls in a linear fashion until we get to about that point there. And at that point there, we get... Again, if we look at the values here, we can hopefully see that at this point, x is equal to plus b plus a. So what we're seeing is that the convolution below x is equal to minus a plus b is 0. Then the convolution increases in a linear fashion up to the position x is equal to minus b plus a. 
it then stays at a constant value to B minus A, and then it ramps down to zero until we get to the position X is equal to plus B plus A. And for X greater than these values, the convolution is zero. So with this information, we can now sketch what the convolution will look like. We'll draw our axes like this. This is now X, and we can mark on various positions. We can write here, this would be minus A, plus, I'm sorry, minus A, minus B, and then we'll have the position minus B plus A, and then over here we'll have symmetry, so we'll here we'll have the position B minus A, and there we'll have the position B plus A, like that. And then we can draw the convolution. Again, we've got to get our linear increase over that range between this point here and this point here. We have a constant value, and then the convolution ramps down to zero over that range here. So essentially the convolution, it looks a bit like a, a top hat function except it has the sloping edges. So this has allowed us to sketch the convolution of the two top hat functions.